Hey, so I'm getting ready to go to this Greta Van Fleet concert uh, tomorrow, and as I'm bustling about, and I was getting, I was going to a Halloween party and uh, everything, and as I was bustling about, I was wondering, where did my shimmery black uh, scarf go? <laughs> I looked all over for this thing and could not find it. And it was right here on, on my table, right in my face. Isn't that weird? That's the kind of mind I have. Ah, I thought I was putting us on pause. I just like showed you my entire chin. I hate that. Ah, so this was my Halloween costume, which really is not much different than the way I dress on a daily basis. It is jeans. Uh, the only thing is that uh, I'm wearing a more flamboyant earring than I typically do. I wear it to like, uh, you know, concerts and stuff like that. The story behind this earring is that uh, I have a favorite cover band that I go see uh, whenever I can. And their their name is LA Rocks and they uh, tour and they do, uh, you know, interpretations of 80s arena rock, you know, like a journey, uh, 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 their bailiwick, uh, so to speak, is uh, uh, the guy's voice is a dead ringer for Bon Jovi, but uh, but they do other things, you know, some Motley Crue, they you know mix, mix it up, you know, with anything of that particular uh, hair metal uh, thing, you know, power ballads, but also heavy hitters. Anyway, I went there and I was kind of dressed in kind of an '80s garb, and I had kind of a, a single earring because I only got a single piercing. Uh, in the ear and <laughs> I've got other piercings. I don't really, uh, I don't really ornate them anymore. I don't know, so it's a moot point. But so she noticed my dragon and she had on a cut a, a pair and I just had on. So it's so like she wanted to do a swap. So I was like, well, I've got another one at home. So we did an earring swap. Of course it was, you know, before COVID. All right, so obviously Halloween, but I want to do a song. And I don't want to do, uh, I don't know, the typical stuff. So this is, this is my interpretation of a song called Choke from a band called I Don't Know How They Found Me. Uh, uh, and if it sucks, it sucks. I need, uh, Bonnie, I'm scrolling up so I can get to it. Okay. Okay. Right. Here we go. And I don't, uh, it's acoustic. This really should be done, uh, uh, with the big sound and, uh, everything, but, well, you know, it sucks to be a performer than to come out. I'm not a performer, but I guess I'm performing right now. But if I'm going to play for a YouTube channel and then to like give like a whole uh, opening soliloquy that's basically an apology for sucking, but it's okay. Stop, drop, and drag me into place. Oh wait, that sucks. That that does suck. So. You know what? I need the cues, never mind. Stop, drop, drag me into the face. Long the pilot's gates. I break your pretty face. Ooh, yeah. Oh, I love it to face. I'm sick of frantic days. What precious basket is Haha, let's go. So shut your dirty mouth. If I could burn this town, I wouldn't hesitate. You smile while you suffocate and die. And that would be just fine. What a lovely time, let it be surely be so bite your tongue and choke yourself to sleep. You get everything you want, does not be your talks to the idiots of us. Yeah, yeah. 
Closing out Halloween, I wanted to do something weird and, uh, you know, gorish and, and, and violent, and in keeping with like horror movies and everything like that. So that's the song. Don't read anything into it. I'm not uh, actively psychotic at the moment. That I know of. So, um, yeah. And then, yeah, so the timing's off, the cadence and everything like that. But this is a cool guitar. You know, the other day I was bummed out because I broke a guitar string. Uh, on one of my Epiphones, and the uh, other Epiphone is is uh, I have, and it's still in its packaging. And the reason why I have that is because I want to keep it in its packaging so that you know I, I'm 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 rolling my dice on this. I'm betting that an inexpensive uh, Epiphone uh, that I bought for ninety nine dollars. Regularly priced at about 150, but I, I got it at 99, and it was, uh, you know, still in the box. And I had one that I love to play, and then I bought one four years later. Now it had appreciated; it had it had climbed uh, in price up to about 300 from the 99 that I bought it from, and then during the pandemic, it dropped. Uh, briefly, like two ninety nine, and now it's back up to about the hundred and fifty. But I'm betting, uh, you know, the economy is weirdly unstable, uh, and it has been uh, strange times. And even though we have, we're not really in the pandemic anymore. Uh, the economy, it's it's. I don't think we're ever going to go back to pre-pandemic economy, but the stabilization to where we see normalized, where we where we see normalized um, inflation rather than reactionary inflation, uh, inflation, which is what we're seeing now, uh, because we like within the last like six months to eight months or whatever, really just got to kind of took a collective. Okay, we can start saying that the pandemic has passed, but we still have the ecology uh, issues that are that are going on. You know, like 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 taking like everybody taking a huge uh, break for about a, a year and a half, anyone who could, and then uh, uh, basically not too much. Uh, going on for that first year except for uh anything that was essential i mean like our entertainers and stuff they were like doing stuff like this from except they're infinitely better than i am you know like we have a, you know yeah so um yeah we had that you know uh well so I'm 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 taking a, I'm taking a risk that if I keep it was not a risk because I have it and I paid a fair price for it but if I bought the Epiphone that I do have that's in the box, uh, I'm betting that if I keep it in the box forever and forever and forever, one day its value will uh, because it's it will be pristine and still in the it's still in the packaging and covering of the plastic and everything, uh, and uh, original string even you know and just everything. Uh, because they're serialized and registered and everything like that. So I'm, I'm willing to bet that um, the value on that particular guitar uh, uh, 
um, it will it will have paid off to be a decent investment. I don't I don't think anybody expects it to. I think it's just a common, inexpensive lower end guitar, but it's a great sounding guitar. And I think once people realize how awesome this freaking thing sounds, uh, not the one I'm holding, which it sounds okay. But the Epiphone that I play has a remarkably powerful sound and it resonates and pushes out even for uh, even for a, uh, uh, a even for a body that that's not a solid body that to say it's not made out of all of one piece but it's made uh, out of a couple of pieces the Epiphone uh, you know it still has a good sound now this guitar I like now this is an acoustic electric. Uh, I actually spent a lot more money on this one than I did the Epiphone. I spent close to three hundred on this one some time ago, uh, maybe about two fifty, I think. It's a Yamaha FX with the series FX three three five zero. That's the model number, and then it does have a serial number underneath the model number. So these things are like cars. I've got models and serials, and it's actually kind of cool. You know how like wine. That, uh, is, is categorized by its year and its region and everything because it has different flavors. Uh, guitars have different intonations depending upon the density of the wood of the season, where the wood comes from and everything like that. So, so uh, uh, it's, 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 it's not nearly as uh, scientific as someone who would like pitch a, uh, why you should spend two thousand dollars on a bottle of Dom Perignon, but uh, there are people who spend thousands of dollars on guitars, especially performers and everything. And I just I don't earn a living, so I can't justify spending that kind of money. But yeah, very specifically, there are uh, there are reasons to spend mega money on instruments if you're a performer. Uh, but you can find some wonderfully sounding instruments uh, for an everyday budget as well. Okay, uh, this is a song that I did, Choke. I should have done that maybe on a guitar or not, you know, maybe with the guitar, but uh, I was really going to say on a keyboard. But the uh, I still have the keyboard. I cannot find. I cannot find in my packing as I'm unpacking. I haven't come across it yet. Maybe I still have it. I don't know. Uh, the uh, power cord, the uh, extension that goes into the back of this uh, ample, uh, keyboard that I have. Uh, uh, it's basically an electric piano keyboard. But what I want to do is, and I did not keep, I had this one student uh, organ. It sounded like you know, just a electric trainer organ and stuff like that, you know, out of a classroom. But I didn't keep that one. It was so metal and heavy. Heavy metal, get it? Uh, but it was such a clunker. And it, it worked really, really well, but it had one function. And that was a function that I could, uh, that, that I didn't mind losing because I can come up with various organ sounds, uh, on other keyboards. What this has done, not being able to find the, the chord, it's motivated me, it's motivated me to uh, resolve to set some money aside so that I actually can buy a really great um, keyboard with a synthesizer uh, for the studio that I use. This is not, I haven't set the studio up yet. I still have to uh, take some drums out of, out of the box, the electric drum, and set them up. I need, I need to get a speaker uh, for that. And, uh, you know, just, um, I want to have a place where I can set up some, uh, uh, a studio, and so I actually can start, like, uh, maybe learning how to, to work and produce a little bit of music just for my, just for my fun uh, sake of it. You know, I've been motivated. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, uh, really a musician, <laughs> but I think it would be fun to pick it up as a hobby. So that's what I'm going to try to work on next year. This year I got a little different, uh, 
perspective on playing a guitar because there are different things you can do because you can pluck. You can strum, you know. But you can tap on the body, you know, like a... And, it, and when you do that, it almost plays like a... a it almost plays like a, 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 a keon drum, but uh, yeah, but then you can also just tap the strings. So, um, yeah, and then you can mix of tapping with, with strumming or plucking or whatever, you know. So there are a lot of things you can do with guitar other than just your... Of course, any guitarist, when they're playing their, and everything, they know that you can kind of play, kind of, you know, hammer on. And, and create different... Uh, sounds and things like that you know it's 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 like basically any other noise maker in the world you know you can find stuff so the cool thing is to find interesting sounds and then to find interesting rhythms uh or melodies or whatever in which they would work i'm, I'm more i think the more i fool around i think i really am uh a rhythm player at the house i think i think it's, I think it's just you know I think it's just that whole like being like a little baby in your crib and you're like, and then you, uh, it's like entertaining yourself. It's, it's insane. I'll tell you, it's just like Jack Nicholson as, uh, the Joker in Batman when he was like entertaining himself. He's like, Ooh. and he's like entertaining himself with little noises that he's making throughout his rants. That's kind of what I'm like. I'm like that little nursery school kid learning how to click for the first time his tongue, you know. You know, so that's what that's what this is like for me. So I'm having fun with it. That's my philosophy. So uh, right now, so what I want to do is I want to just uh, have fun with music for a little bit. Uh, I there was a lot of there were a lot of things uh, I was not able to bring over to the new apartment from the old apartment, basically just because I had to get everything done, uh, like in one day. And I, you know, I didn't have money for movers, but I had some great friends. And, uh, uh, so we made, uh, collectively about four trips and got everything moved, but it was like three adult people, uh, my age or above. Hey, if you know my age, great. If you don't, I'm not going to say it now. And so, uh, yeah. I'll tell you later. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Uh, I'm going on, what are we, about 18 minutes. I'm about to end the video. Uh, peace, love, and light. And uh, yeah, bye.